Welcome to part three of this Football Manager 2016 experiment, where I've swapped all of the English divisions around on the FM16 editor and then holidayed a few years into the future to see what happens on the game. If you missed part one and two, maybe go and check them out first, but I've holidayed four seasons so far. Thank you for all the support on part one and two. Over 900 likes on part one as it stands. That is incredible. So thank you so much. If you can hit the like button on this part three as well, that'd be marvellous. And it, uh, hit it if you want to see a part four. I'm, I'm intending on going a few more years. Um, so if you really want to see that, then let me know and I will oblige. I will definitely be doing a few more parts if that's what you guys want. You can also download the database. It's on the Steam Workshop. I've put a link to it in the description below, but you just need to subscribe to it. I know some people have problems subscribing to databases and then it appearing on the game. If that doesn't work, unsubscribe, then resubscribe. If that still doesn't work, on the Football Manager homepage, there is um, a button called Downloads, and you can access the Steam Workshop that way. You should be able to subscribe to that. Then when you start a new game, make sure you select Custom, and you can select this custom database before starting your game. So that's how to do it for those of you that have been having problems. OK, so as you can see, it is June 2020. So it's the end of the fifth season on the game. And you can see Lower Stuff have managed to win their second season Second Premier League title in a row, just one point ahead of Gosport. Those two seem to be the powerhouses at the moment, closely followed by Hemel Hempstead. Harrogate, winner of the first two division titles, have actually dropped off a bit down in eighth place now. You can see Ebbsfleet, who got promoted from the Championship, doing very well. Tranmere Rovers and Sheffield United also doing very well now that they've been promoted to the top division. Yeovil, Tamworth and Oxford unfortunately relegated this season. Cambridge and Carlisle United did survive. There's a real interesting mix of teams and it's definitely going to get more modelled up, especially next season as we see Chelsea and Man City get into the top division. I'm sure we'll see them as the top two when I go down to the Championship in a second. But you can see Divock Origi, top scorer for Gosport. Let's have a look at him. I don't know, I've in installed a new skin by the way. I think it's quite nice. Some people wanted to see the polygon and a few other details. So I have included... I, I installed this skin because it does include that. Um, let me know your thoughts on it. I don't know, maybe it's not your cup of tea, but I quite like it. Sort of a, a snazzy sort of dark style skin, I guess. But if we have a look at Divock Origi then, he um, left Liverpool for £3.3 .3 million, bargain for Gosport, because he's done really, really well for them since moving to the Premier League again. Uh, doing really well. You can see Galloway was the top average rating for lower stuffed. Here he is, Brendan Galloway, 24 years old, and he left Everton for £11.25 million. You can see here he does actually have caps for England as well, 18 caps for England. We'll just have a look at the England team right now. They're currently 18th in the world, Argentina are top. But England doing okay under Gareth Southgate. This is this is the team, you can see all the, the different teams that are um, part of the England squad. You can see Joe Hart is at a member of New York Red Bulls. That is really quite unusual. He's left Manchester City two seasons ago on a free. Maybe he didn't want to play in League One anymore with Man City, although they're going to get promoted to the Premier League this season anyway. But he's over in the MLS. There's a real mix. Callum Chambers is at Atletico Madrid, but we've got some lower stuff players in there. Luke Shaw's at Real Madrid. Lewis Cook's at Man City with Ross Barkley as well. Just sort it by positions it's a bit easier to see. Frazier Forster also in the MLS at LA Galaxy. Really interesting. Stephen Cook is playing in, is that Saudi Arabia? As is Phil Jones. <laughs> There's James Milner still in the England team. He must be pretty ancient now, but he's playing in America as well. Age 34, it's not as old as I thought he would be. Jack Walsh is at Chelsea. Danny Ings also playing in Saudi Arabia. Is this Saudi Arabia? Let's have a quick look. It's, no, it's Qatar, sorry. So they're playing in the Qatari League. And Harry Kane's still at Spurs. But a real mix of different players in there. Really quite interesting, actually. So let's go back. You can see assists-wise, um, this guy who starts at Arsenal on the save is now at Tranmere Rovers. Move for £7 million. Pounds. Um, actually, Fulham bought him for 600k when in the Venerama South, but has now moved to Tremor Rovers for £7 million, and he got the most assists this season. Some great stuff going on there. You can see Rio Ferdinand lost his job as Tamworth manager as they were relegated this season, and Sam Allardyce is in charge of Oxford, but hasn't managed to keep them up. 
we just have a look at them. Yeah, Sam Allardyce in charge. But unsuccessful at keeping them up. Going down to the championship then. Predictably, Chelsea and Man City, the top two. Chelsea only lost one game all season. Hayes and Yedding going back up to the top flight, though. They, they were reasonably successful in the top flight, I think. First time round, if we look here, down here, they did finish second in that first season. Then third, 13th before really dropping. But they're back in the top flight after winning the playoffs, beating the likes of Wickham, Wanderers, Concord Rangers and Curzon Ashton. East, Eastbourne, Gainsborough and Nuneaton, the three unlucky teams to go down, but it really is a great mix here. Diogo Costa, top scorer in the league. Mason Bennett, joint top scorer with him. And the, he, he was playing for Solihull Moors, who were almost relegated. Lukaku's back at Chelsea, by the way, third top scorer. Oscar Aguero and Stones, top average rating players there. And assist-wise, Oscar De, De Bruyne are doing very well as well. Uh, clean sheets, Courtois with 32 clean sheets, that is incredible. People asked to see who was manager of Chelsea and those sort of teams, so Mourinho's in charge of Chelsea at the moment. Uh, Man City currently have Brendan Rodgers in charge, which is probably going to make some of you chuckle. Pellegrini left recently, last year actually, and Rodgers now been in charge for almost a year and has led them back to the Premier League, as you would expect, I guess. So going down to League One... We saw Arsenal and Tottenham, the top two. Predictable once again. Those two are probably going to be the next two to make it up into the Premier League. Portsmouth won the playoffs ahead of Leighton Orient, Forest Green and Worcester. I guess it'd be interesting to see how these Premier League teams, or real-life Premier League teams, adapt to getting back to the top flight. Will they be able to unseat the likes of Lowestoft and Gosport? They probably will. This season might be the last season we see the likes of Lowestoft win in the league, unfortunately. But... The most interesting thing to be to see will be 20 years down the line, how many of those teams will still be in the Premier League? Will Lowestoft still be fighting it out for league titles or maybe FA Cups and that sort of thing? So we can see here Alexis Sanchez, Alexis Sanchez, 34 goals, top scorer, Christian Eriksen, top average rating, Ozil still at Arsenal as well. Eastleigh, Chester, Maystone and Lincoln were the four teams to go down. Uh, Arsenal, who have they got in charge then? Let's have a quick look. They've got Nigel Pearson in charge. I guess, you know, reputation has gone down to one and a half stars. But someone was asking about um, average attendances and that sort of thing. So we'll just have a quick look for the likes of Arsenal. Last day of the season, still getting 57,000 people on the seats at um, the Emirates, despite the fact they're in League One. But that was the last day of the season. You can see here on their 7 0 win, only 41,000 people uh, um, went to that game. So it is, it's sort of between about 40 to 60,000 people, I guess, attending Arsenal games. So despite the fact they are in a lower division, they're still getting quite a number of people through the doors, despite the, the reputation of the clubs really plummeting. Tottenham actually have a higher reputation than. Arsenal and they have moved to New White Hart Lane so it'd be interesting to see how they are doing for attendances. Last home game of the season 59,000 people but against this team against Grimsby they only got 33,000 people so it, it's a big variety for them as well. Pochettino is still in charge of Spurs by the way. Let's go down to League 2 then. Uh, League 2 won by Man United quite convincingly so only one defeat all season. Notts County and Hartlepool also going up automatically and Crawley via the playoffs. Southampton went into administration, 12 points deducted. So despite the fact they, they were the second favourites to go up, I guess, with Man United, a real-life Premier League team, they are the first team to be unsuccessful at this stage. They've, be, they've finished mid-table in League 2. Southport and Bromley went down. My boys, Chelmsford City from Chelmsford Champions on FM15, surviving League 2 once again. Memphis, top scorer in the league. Mane also up there at second top score. You can see Damian doing very well average rating wise. Yanezai still at Man United, 34 assists this season. That is quite remarkable. He's probably turned into a pretty good player for, for Man United. Despite the fact they're playing at a lower level, these players are still developing. Man United, who do they have in charge then? They've got Steve Clark in charge. They're only a two star reputation team, you may have seen there. Southampton have Bobby Davison in charge. They're a one and a half star regional team as well. And they're in administration. So are they going to be a team that gets ruined? Are they going to struggle to get back to the top flight? Let's let's find out in future parts, I guess. So National League won by Liverpool. 124 points just ahead of Newcastle on goal difference. Newcastle really unlucky. Sheffield Wednesday, the team to win the playoffs. So the first 
non-Premier League team, real life Premier League team, to go up from the National League. Championship Sheffield Wednesday, beating the likes of Newcastle, Villa and West Ham to go up to the Football League. Well done to them. Blackpool, Walsall, Rochdale and Aldershot relegated. Stoke struggling here in the National League, really not being very convincing at all. Swansea also quite far down the list. Troy Deeney, top scorer for Watford, 34 goals. You can see Diafra Sacco, 27 goals. He's moved to Aston Villa. Coutinho, top average rating, still at Liverpool as well. Great stuff. Let's just see who's in charge of Liverpool, actually. It is still Jurgen Klopp. They're a one-and-a-half star regional team, and they're in debt as well. So what will happen to Liverpool in the future season now that they're in debt? So the National North League, Leeds United and Hull City going up via the playoffs. So Geisley, Hensford and Burton Albion relegated. Barini top scorer for Sunderland, but they finished all the way down in 8th place. They're really struggling to get out of this division. And Matt Loughton top average rating, Jamie Allen top assists as you can see there. Let's just see who's in charge of Leeds because they've probably been through 500 managers. Simon Grayson's back in charge. They have been through quite a few managers on the game, as you would predict. They've got, they've had Sam Allardyce as well. Cool. They've, they, predictably so, they've been through a lot of managers, as, as you would expect with Leeds United. And the, lastly, National League South. Fulham, champions, QPR winning the playoffs. Histon, Kettering and Lewis going down. You can see the top average ratings and that sort of thing there if you're interested. Daryl Clark's in charge of Crystal Palace now, who are really struggling, struggling down in 12th. Bournemouth down in 13th as well. Wow, they're struggling big time. Some of these real-life Premier League teams, real-life Premier League teams, trying to get out of the division. FA Cup final between Man City and Hem uh, Hemel Hempstead. Man City are victorious. Sterling and Ross Barkley with the winning goals, but Hemel Hempstead did really well to get through to the final. There, that is good to see. You can see that the recent winners over there, whole City, winning the FA Cup three seasons ago, and the League Cup. Chelsea have won it for a second season in a row, beating Sheffield United in the final. Let's just have a quick look at Champions Cup and Europa League and that sort of thing. But you can see Barcelona was successful this year. They beat PSG in the final. But let's go back to the group stage, see, see how our English teams did. I think there's only two teams, maybe three. You can see Gosport finished bottom of their group, unfortunately. Lowestoft did finish third, though, so they would have dropped down to the Europa League. Yeah, so there's only two English teams in there at this stage. So let's go down to the Europa League and see who won it. Ooh, Seville beat Chelsea. So Chelsea could have qualified for the Champions League in their first season back in the top flight, but were unsuccessful against Seville, uh, unfortunately for them. So let's go back. It's only the winners that get the Champions League place, by the way. Even if this team has qualified by the league, I don't think runners-up get into the Champions League. Just to clarify that question, a few people were asking. So if we look at the group stage, you can see Chelsea qualified second place in their group. Uh, Ebbsfleet also qualified from their group in second place. And those are the only two English teams at this point. But then there was the first knockout round where Chelsea beat Monaco. And the other English teams in here, we saw Lowestoft lose against Ajax and... Uh, Ebbsfleet lose against Marseille, unfortunately, and then we saw Chelsea get through to the final, of course. So that's the end of this first season. I'm going to holiday another season. Th these videos are a bit longer now. We're looking in-depth. I hope you're finding them interesting. It really is about just looking at little niche things. If you spot anything fascinating yourself whilst watching this video, stick it in the comment section below. That would be fantastic. Some people did ask some questions, asked me to look at club coefficients and that sort of thing as well. I will have a look at that at the end of this video once we've done three seasons just to, so we can compare, see how the, the old Premier League teams that are now making it into the top flight are doing against these other teams, at, at these new Premier League teams. As you can see here, end of the 2021 season, Chelsea winning the league, their first season back in the top flight. I guess that is predictable. However, Lowestoft finished above Manchester City, which is brilliant to see. I'm not, you know, I've not got anything against Man City. I'm just, in general terms, it's fantastic to see one of these teams that were stuck in this division at the start of this experiment, finishing above a Premier League team, getting back to the top flight in the minimum seasons required. So Man City failing here, although they did have top scorer Aguero, only 17 goals. It's pretty low for a top scorer. Origi doing very well again this season. Aguero, top average rating. James Ward-Prowse, Ebbsfleet getting the most assists along with Dan Crowley and Kevin De Bruyne. But that, that is really interesting. Chelsea having a phenomenal season, winning the league quite comfortably so. 
first time back. But um, at the same time, it's interesting to see Lowestoft finish above Man City. Truro, Whitehawk, Brackley, the three teams unfortunate to go down. Western Supermare surviving again, despite the fact they've always seemed to be favourites to go down, I think. If we just look at season preview. Yeah, favourites to go down, but they've survived once again. Doing really well, actually. You can see here, managed movements, Patrick Vieira was in charge of Tranmere Rovers at one point. I don't know if he is at the moment. They seem to have been through a lot of managers. For some reason, he is in charge currently. Three-star national reputation now. Lowest, let's have a look at them. They're up to three and a half star team. They've got Michael Laudrup in charge. Really good stuff. Let's just have a quick look at their team. Just out of interest, you can see they've got Ogbonna in there. Akore, Paddy McNair, Markovic, Urzel. They've signed Mr. Urzel. How old is he now? 32 years old, you can see here. And he was signed on a free from Arsenal, who were at the at that time in League One, getting promoted from League One, and has had a really good season back in the top flight. Seven point seven nine average rating, five goals, ten assists. That is that is fantastic. They've got James Wilson up front as well. So yeah, great to see Lower Stoff doing really really well this season. Let's go down to actually. I'm just gonna have a look at transfers. We didn't look at that last time. Top transfer. Chelsea have signed Oxlade Chamberlain from Arsenal. And they've also signed Kurt Zuma back. They must they sold into Arsenal at the start of this or towards the start of this, this experiment. He went spent three years at Arsenal, has gone back to Chelsea for twenty four million. So Arsenal did make a profit on him as well. Next bigger signing, Caleb Sneath going from Lowestoft to Maidenhead, a regen, an English regen, only 19 years old, and going for 23.5 million. Lowestoft making a huge profit there, uh, and going to Maidenhead and playing in the Premier League. Uh, these, you can see the other signings yourself if you're interested. You can see Pedro Obiang going from West Ham to Chelsea for a substantial fee, and Eric Dyer as well. James McCarthy going from Everton to Man City. So Man City and Chelsea certainly spending money in their first season back in the top flight just out of interest I want to see Manchester they're still rich three star reputation Brendan Rodgers still in charge and Chelsea are four and a half star reputation back to continental reputation so that their reputation really wasn't affected too badly by this experiment it seems to be quite random what's happened Arsenal winners of the Premier uh, the Championship 108 points Mill second but most Interestingly of all, Tottenham haven't got promoted to the Premier League. So there's only going to be three real-life Premier League, League teams in the top flight next season. Quite simply, because Spurs have had 12 points deducted and gone into administration. They've got OK finances now. They must have recovered from administration. But that has really affected them and has meant that they haven't got promoted automatically. Concord Rangers winning the playoffs, beating Oxford in the final. Spurs didn't even get through to the playoff final. So that really is fascinating. Carry Kane was top scorer and Lamella was second top scorer, but they still, it still wasn't enough simply because of them having points deducted. Stockport, Dartford and Chorley were relegated from this division. Oxford couldn't get back to the top flight at the first time of asking there. Let's have a look at transfers. I'm sure some of these teams, like Oxford, they would have got parachute payments as well, wouldn't they? Coming out the top flight, they weren't able to get back up again. But maybe they, maybe they will at some point. These Arsenal spending a lot of money, you can see here. But Chelsea, uh, the two kings here, signing Arsenal players, which allowed them to spend money. I've just noticed Monaco signed Sanchez from Arsenal as well. OK, let's go down to League One then which was won by Man United, as you would expect. They only lost two games all season. They will probably be going up with Spurs next season, I guess, from the Championship. We'll find out in the next part. Well, in this part, in the, the next section of this part. Stalybridge also automatically promoted, and Luton went up via the playoffs. AFC filed Torquay, Braintree and Kidderminster relegated from League One. Bath just about surviving there. Some great teams in here. So it's starting to mix up a bit more as well now. You can see Ashley Fletcher and Stevie uh, Mivid Mividdy, the joint top scorers in this division. Daly Blinn still at Man United doing very well. And Yanajai having another good season. 22 assists. He's, he's doing very well with Man United on this save. OK, League 2 then, which was won by Sheffield Wednesday. So they've been promoted two seasons in a row here. Possibly three, actually. If we just have a quick look at them, they've done really, really well. Um, 
Actually, no. Promote, yeah, promoted three seasons in a row. That's right. Gary Mills in charge of them. They're doing incredibly well. AFC Wimbledon and Southampton were promoted this time from League Two, despite going into administration a last season. But they have recovered to go up to League One. Liverpool won the playoffs. However, they went into administration. They would have finished third if they hadn't gone into administration. So they have financial problems. They are in debt. Neil Critchley is in charge. They've still got Roberto Firmino. Moreno and Emre Chan at the club as you can see there however they are in financial problems but they were successful in getting promoted via the playoffs so they are in League 1 with Southampton and Sheffield Wednesday next season and Wimbledon of course not forgetting them Mansfield and Basingstoke relegated as you can see there to the conference or Vanarama National League which was won by Hull City 103 points QPR, Aston Villa, Watford, Everton, Newcastle, West Brom, Stoke, West Ham also missing out really badly this season. Leeds were the team to go up via the playoffs. Um, another successive promotion for them. Doing really well now. And Garlo, top scorer for Aston Villa. Creswell is always featuring in these sort of average, highest average ratings lists. I, I find he got most man of the matches. But West Ham all the way down in 12th. Really struggling. Port Vale, Barrow, Southport and Bromley relegated to Conference South slash North can see uh, Mick McCarthy sacked as Aston Villa manager there as well so two real life championship teams going up from this division above a few Premier League teams there so National League North then won by Leicester City they finally got promoted with Blackburn Rovers via the playoffs Sunderland still struggling down in eighth place Rochdale York and Ultranham relegated Jordan Rhodes top scorer he's always top scorer of these sort of lists isn't he wherever he's playing He's going to be up there. And the National League South was won by Norwich City going up. Uh, a real-life Premier League team getting promoted again. And Ipswich Town via the playoffs. Palace missing out. Bournemouth missing out as well. Anyone else in there? Quite a few championship teams still in there. And uh, some real-life sort of lesser teams have now got relegated down to here. In terms of lesser, I just mean lower down in real life, of course. Weymouth, Bognor Regis and Leamington relegated. Now, I was interested to see a team like Bolton, who were relegated, I think, in the first season. They have not managed to get back up again. They are in the depths of English football. Half a star reputation obscure. They have been ruined by this experiment. I'm, a, I'm really sorry to say, Bolton fans. But that's, that was good. I suppose that was going to happen to a few teams. I think there's a few others that were relegated in the first season that haven't managed to get back out of the regional leagues on this game. I suppose what I could do in the future is download a, a ninth or 10th tier English football league and, and see what happens to them in a bit more detail, I guess. That could be quite interesting. So let's go down to the FA Cup then, which was won by Chelsea against Margate, 3-0 in the final. Unlucky Margate. And Man City beat Lowestoft 4-0 in the Capital One Cup final. I forgot to look at the other competitions last year. We saw Chelsea win Community Shield last year, but Lowestoft managed to beat Man City on penalties this year. Johnston Paint Trophy won by Man United two seasons in a row here. They beat Luton Town this year. And then Burnley won the FA Trophy two seasons in a row as well. So the Champions League won by Real Madrid 2-0 in extra time against Dortmund. Let's go back see if there's any English teams involved at all. I don't think there will be. Because at the moment there's only two English teams making it into the Champions League. And as you can see here, Lowestoft finished second, they, uh, third. Sorry, They only just missed out on automatic, uh, an automatic place from their group. Gosport bottom of their group, unfortunately. So Lowestoft do drop into the Euro Cup, which was won by... Schalke, who beat Marseille in the final. Let's go back then, see if there's any English teams involved here. Chelsea lost against Schalke in the second round. First knockout round, we saw Chelsea beat Club Bruges and Lowestoft lose against Wolfsburg. Man City lost against Fiorentina and Hemel Hempstead lost against Zenit. So Hemel Hempstead definitely got out of their group then. So well done to them. Man City second in their group. Chelsea top of their group and Hempstead second in their group just behind Lazio but they did very well in uh, and Ebbsfleet missing out finishing third in their group of the Euro Cup so I'm going to go one more season in this part three and look at this once again in a bit more detail and then some other things like club coefficients and uh, maybe some national uh, look at the England, English national team as well. 
So it looks like we've returned to Chelsea dominance in the Premier League. They've managed to win it for the second season in a row. Man City finished third for a second season in a row. I think there's only one Champions League place available now in this in the English Premier League. Let's just have a quick look. So one team qualifies for the group stage and then one team qualifies for third qualifying phase. You can see the, the different qualifications there and prize money and that sort of thing if you're interested. I'm also going to have a look at the stadiums just now to see who's got the biggest stadium. Man City currently have the biggest stadium. Then it's Arsenal, Emirates Stadium and Stamford Bridge. Uh, they've extended it to 51,000 at the moment. Bramall Lane is next. Are there any new stadiums in here? I think there will be, yeah. So we've got Cambridge. They've got <laughs> a glitched name there. Stadium. Oh, no, is that that's the Milton Keynes Stadium, isn't it? Are they playing there at the moment because perhaps they're building their own new one? West uh, Margate have ha Hearts Down Park, which doesn't say when it was built. So is this a, this just being extended, I guess, the current stadium? Woodspring Stadium for Western Super Mare doesn't say which year that was built either. Brunton Park is the Carlisle United Real Stadium, but is that their real capacity or is it being extended? I'm not clued up on the capacity of Carlisle United's Real Life Stadium, but I'm sure... Oh, look, Hayes and Yedding currently playing at Vicarage Road, which is curious. I guess I may be there building a new stadium. So there might be some new stadiums being built in the next part. So we're, we'll keep out our eye out for that in a, in the next part, in part four. So Chelsea, as I said, champions. Hemel Hempstead, second. Man City and Gosport, the, the next two teams. And Arsenal finishing up in fifth in their first season back, but below Gosport and Hemel Hempstead, interestingly. Tramir once again missing out on Europe. I think they're trying to push for Europe. They're going through lots of managers. Maidenhead, Concord Rangers and Millwall relegated back down to the championship here. A bit unfortunate for them. Last stuff all the way down in ninth. They are starting to struggle a bit now. Let's just have a quick look at transfers as well. You can see top transfer was a Man City transfer once again. Nastasius wrench from Ch uh, Schalke to Chelsea as well. Lots of money from Man City. Chelsea, Man United currently in the, the championship spending big on a, a lower stuff player. But Margate they, and lower stuff did spend some money there. As you can see, Stuart Maloney going from Leeds to Margate for £10.75 million. And Kakanoglu going from Barcelona to lower stuff for £8.75 million. That is brilliant. 28 years old. It's not like he's ancient either. It's a good sign. He just didn't really play for, for Barcelona. He's Played for Bayern Munich on this save as well. He's hardly played any games looking at that until he moved to lower stuff where he had a decent first season with them. Okay, let's go down then to... Let's just have a look at profile so you can see the, the um, top uh, top players. Harry Kane, top scorer for Man City, as you can see there. Championship then was won by Man United, as you would expect, 107 points. Spurs also managed to go up this season, despite financial problems last season. Yeovil went up via the playoffs, beating Sutton United, Whitehawk and Tamworth. Uh, Diamantikos, top scorer for Yeovil, 24 goals. Eriksson's been doing really well, and Yanezai has been doing particularly well on this save, 28 points. Oxford City relegated with Luton and Alfreton, the, uh, the other Oxford, Oxford United, only just surviving this season in the Championship. They've dropped off after getting to the Premier League. They're back down in the Championship and struggling. Let's go down to League One then, which was won by Plymouth Argyle. 92 points. Sheffield Wednesday, another successive promotion for them. They're doing really well on this save. FC Halifax going up via the playoffs. Southampton missing out in the playoffs. Unsuccessful here. Grimsby, Worcester, Bath and Chorley. Relegated to League Two, Lewis Graben top scorer with Firmino. Who? Oh, where's Liverpool? That's really strange. He must have. That is strange. I'm a bit confused by that. How is he? Where are Liverpool? Oh, Liverpool are here. They're down in 17th. I just completely overlooked that. Liverpool have done really badly. They they finished 17th in League One. What has happened to them? Hmm. Sheffield Wednesday, on the other hand, are flying up the divisions. How many managers have Chorley had? That is ridiculous. Bottom of the table. And I mean they spent quite a few years in the championship before getting relegated. This is their second successive promotion. And how many managers? They they've had so many just in the last year. <laughs> wow. They've they've really struggled as well in the last couple of years.
Going down to League 2 then, which was won by Leeds United, another promotion for them. They're doing really well on this save. Newport County and Boston United, the other two teams to get automatically promoted. Gateshead went up via the playoffs. It's good to see some of the championship teams doing well because it's not all the Premier League teams firing up the division straight away. You've got the predictable ones, Chelsea, Man City, Man United, Arsenal, Spurs and Liverpool haven't actually done that well. They're, in, they're stuck in League 1, but you know those five predictably have gone pretty much straight up but the the rest of the Premier League teams are really having to fight it out to try and get up and some of them won't make it up I'm sure some of them will get stuck down here in the depths of English football Bournemouth and Dover relegated you can see there going down to the National League then which was won by Ipswich Town and West Ham have finally gone up via the playoffs Leicester having a good first season in the National League only just missing out on automatic promotion but yeah West Ham successful this time round but we've still got Newcastle, Everton, Aston Villa, West Brom, QPR, Watford, Fulham, Wigan down there as well, Stoke almost relegated what well, eight points but they are finished in 20th place in the National League, Bradford City, Peterborough, Swansea relegated wow that is a shock Swansea City have been relegated from the National League this is like what could have happened to them if it had gone really wrong for them back in the 90s as as it almost did at one point. One star regional reputation, they have been ruined by this database I'm afraid. But this is just one save, it could happen so differently. If you download the database and do this yourself it could be completely different and if you play on the database, maybe manage Swansea, get them to the Premier League, lead them to dominance or or alternatively like I've said manage a team like Lowestoft and see if you can finish above the likes of Chelsea and Man City when they inevitably get back to the top flight but yeah Swansea really struggling on this so National League North won by Nottingham Forest Derby also going up in the playoffs so Sunderland missing out once again in this division Barry Southport and Whitby relegated National League South then won by Reading, 107 points. And Wolves went up via the playoffs. Palace missing out, Bournemouth missing out. Birmingham stuck down there. They've been doing pretty poorly on this. Aldershot, Cambridge C and Dorchester relegated. Those are probably teams, well, Cambridge C and Dorchester, teams that come up from the regionals and uh, being a bit unsuccessful, as you can see there. So FA Cup then, the last one of this update, won by Man United 2-0 against Arsenal in the final. Let's just look at the teams. You can see the sort of players playing for the teams. Carl Walker's at Arsenal now. They've got, he oh, they've got Bellerin and Carl Walker on the same pitch. Two right backs. Oh look, someone with uh, Holden as the last name. Rob Holden. Regen. And let's go down to the Capital One Cup then, which was won by Chelsea. They've won three of the last four. Hazen Yedding just missing out. These teams like Hazen Yedding just don't quite have enough to defeat the likes of Chelsea in the final, do they? Unfortunately. So that's uh, that's unlucky for them. Cap uh, community showed won by Chelsea on penalties against the last stuff. They've lost out on penalties this year. And then the Johnson's Paint Trophy won by Sheffield on Wednesday on penalties against Stevenage. They've had a very good time lately. Brighton uh, beat Middlesbrough in the FA Trophy, and I think that's it. Let's just have a quick look at We'll look at the European titles and then go into a few other details as well. So Champions League won by Juventus against Porto in the final. Ah, we saw an English team in Chelsea getting through to the semi-final, losing out on penalties to Juventus. I, I'm guessing that's the only English team to get through to the knockouts. We may not even have seen the other English team in the group stage because there's only one. Oh, well, Lowestoft did get through to the group stage but only managed to get one point, unfortunately. Bit unsuccess unsuccessful for them. Marseille were winners of the Euro Cup. Let's have a look at how the English teams got on in this competition. Did oh we saw Ebbsfleet get through to the quarter final this time round. A bit unlucky, losing against Bordeaux in the quarter final. Second round, Hemel Hempstead lost against Ebbsfleet. Wow, <laughs> an all English clash there. Man City lost against Benfica as well. And the first knockout round, Hemel Hempstead beat Dynamo Kiev, Man City beat Braga. And Ebbsfleet beat Gladbach to get through to that second round and inevitably got through to the uh, quarter final as well. So, this is the English team. I, sh I guess they're preparing for the World Cup, unless they didn't qualify. Are oh, they there? Third, 
Uh, yeah, they're in, the, in Group A of the World Cup. So in the next part, in part four, we'll see how they got on in the 2022 World Cup. These are the top teams in England by reputation. Chelsea first, but then it's Lowestoft, Hamill Hempstead, Gosport, Ebb Street, and then Manchester City. So Chelsea have really recovered. I don't know why their reputation wasn't affected. It's quite strange, but it, it didn't go down very much. Man City are starting to recover now, but Lowestoft, four-star reputation team, doing really well. And there's three other teams above Man City there. Tranmere, Sheffield United, pretty high up as well. Crystal Palace, their reputation has not been affected. This is strange. It is quite random what has happened here. It's just weird glitches. Because I've done stuff on the editor, it's obviously just really thrown the game out because Palace have somehow survived with three-star reputation despite being in the National League South. Leicester and Sunderland also doing really well being high up. They're above Manchester United and Spurs who are in the Championship. So that's sort of broken the game a bit there. Bournemouth also very high up despite being in the National League South. Hayes and Yedding doing really well but you can see there for yourself if you're interested. Club coefficients this is to do with Europe and that sort of thing. So if you're interested in that, you can have a look. Top goal scorer, we don't really need to see that. But oh, this is quite interesting, actually, these things. Stadium info. What's the biggest stadium in the country now? It is Old Trafford, 75,635. Then it's New White Hart Lane, City, Arsenal, Liverpool, West Ham, Newcastle. The traditional teams, as you would expect. Uh, the biggest team... That we so I suppose Cambridge, but they're playing at MK Don Stadium. Margate have the biggest stadium out of any of the new teams in the Premier League, thirty thousand one hundred twenty-eight. Highest attendance. Now, this is max attendance, I guess. I wanted to see the highest. I think this is the highest attendance they've achieved in the last season. So this is the England squad at the moment. Joe Hart still at New York. We've got Jack Butland at Hemel Hempstead and Ben Garrett, the other goalkeeper at Harrogate. Gosport have Phil Jones now. They've signed him. Galloway's still at Lowestoft. We've got a couple Hemel Hempstead players in there. Jordan Ibe and Will Hughes. They've great signings by Hemel Hempstead there. A few Man City players in there. Berahini, Berahino, Sterling, Barkley, Harry Kane as well. But James Will Prowse at Ebbsfleet. We've got... Uh, a Leverkusen player and a, a Bishop Stortford player in there as well. So obviously some of these are regens now. Most capped player is Joe Hart with 95. Lowestoft had Brendan Gallo with 41 caps. He's doing really well on this save, isn't he? So these are the world rankings. Argentina's still top. But I want to look at competitions, coefficients, that sort of thing. So the English Premier League is down here now. Three and a half star reputation competition. It's really dropped off, but it will recover over time, I guess, and they will start to get their Champions League play, uh, places back. This is a list of the biggest clubs in the world. Chelsea are up there. I suppose Lowestoft will be on here as well. Yeah, there they are on the list. Uh, but in terms of finances, are the English clubs still the richest as they always are on this? It's actually three Spanish teams up, then PSG. Then Chelsea, Man United also on there, Arsenal, Man City, but lowest off, the 25th richest team in the world, thanks to this experiment, 334 million. Harrogate, the 32nd richest club in the world, with 201 million pounds. That is brilliant to see, really is. Hemel Hempstead on there, St. Albans, Margate, Bishop Stortford, Hayes and Yedding. This is t Premier League TV money for you. Millwall up there, 132 million. Ebbsfleet, Spurs, Sheffield United, Whitehawk, Carlisle, Western Supermare. Tamworth, Concord Rangers, Maidenhead and Tranmere, all in the top 100 richest clubs in the world. That is fantastic. Just World Player of the Year, I thought we'd have a look at this before I end this part. You can see Hamas Rodriguez has, has, won one, uh, has won World Player of the Year, finished above Suarez and Paolo Dybala. Messi won it last year, head of Ozil and Suarez. Ozil was at lower stuff, remember, and he managed to get second place in World Player of the Year. That is fantastic. That really is. Well, Golden Ball, Hamas Rodriguez winning that one as well, and Ozil second in World Golden Ball. And Team of the Year, then. Let's see the sort of players in this. Let's just go back a season. I want to see Ozil win here. He, oh, yeah, there he is. Lower stuff playing World Team of the Year. That. 
that is brilliant. That's made the experiment worthwhile. <laughs> a lower stuff player featuring in World Team of the Year. Anyway, thank you for watching this part three. It's been quite long. I've tried to go into detail and answered some of your questions that you guys were interested in. If you want a part four, remember to hit that like button. I'll be going probably five seasons in part four. Uh, so it might, I'll, I'll be doing them in a little bit less detail, I guess, just to make sure the video is not insanely long. Uh, but I want to get through quite a few seasons. We'll probably be doing, you know, 20 more seasons in total, maybe slightly more as well. Uh, but speeding through, so five seasons next part, then maybe 10 seasons in the part after that. We'll see how it goes. But thank you for watching. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Let me know anything you spotted that you found funny or intriguing and hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. I'll see you soon.